Welcome to Level Up Mechanics. My name is Chris, and in today's video, we will be going over the first round of sound system upgrades that I have currently installed on my 2008 Honda Civic LX. The factory sound system is just the base sound system for the 8th gen Civic. So there's only four speakers, there's no external amplifier, and there's no factory subwoofer. So in the first round of upgrades in today's video, we're going to be replacing the factory head unit with the Sony XAV-AX4000. This head unit has a clean and simple touchscreen display. It also includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We will also be installing a new rear view camera to work alongside the Sony head unit. Make sure to check out the description section below as I'll have links to every single item that we install in this video today. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll get to that as soon as I possibly can. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and move forward with the install. All right, so here are all the items that I'm going to attempt to install today. And the first item will be the Sony XAV-AX4000 stereo receiver. This does come with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto amongst a multitude of other features. And in order to install this, I'm going to need a few items to go along with it. One of them being an aftermarket uh, dash kit from Skosh. Uh, all of these items that you see here on this video are on Amazon, so I'll make sure to provide a link in the description section below in case you are interested in picking this up for your Honda Civic. Um, the dash kit actually comes in three different colors, so make sure that when you order it, you get the correct one. You've got an earth taupe color, which is more of like a brownish gray, a uh, regular dark atlas gray, which is my uh, interior color. And then you also have a blue metallic option, with which has more of a bluish hue or uh, tint to the actual dash kit. So mine is the dark atlas gray, so I'll be installing that one today. And then in addition to the stereo receiver, we're also going to attempt to install a rear view camera that will work in correlation with the stereo uh, receiver and we also have a wire harness adapter for 2006 to 2010 hondas um, it also this one also has an antenna adapter just in case if i need it uh, and i'm going to need to figure out how to wire this up to the harness that comes with the stereo receiver so that might take a little bit uh, i do have a printout of what my pins should be for the connector that's on the back of the factory unit so i should be able to use this information along with the uh, connector adapter and i should be able to wire up the stereo to make it more plug and play but in the meantime hopefully this uh, install should go pretty smoothly so the very first step whenever you're doing any electrical upgrades or electrical repairs, always, always disconnect the negative battery cable to protect all of the electronics on the vehicle. Now that we have it disconnected, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so the first step in removing all of these dash panels is to actually remove the kick panel from underneath the steering wheel. This is just held in by a couple of retaining tabs or retaining clips along the panel on the back side so you can pull it straight out afterwards it looks like we're going to have one screw uh, on the left side of the steering wheel that holds this upper instrument panel in place now that the screw is out looks like we can just pop everything off and there we go you may have a connection or electrical connector on the left side over here by the door. And we'll just unplug that connector. And we should be able to get this piece out. You may have to drop the steering wheel column just to give you some more room. But yeah, just one screw that is held in over here on the left side. And then uh, everything is held in by clips. And you're gonna have 
uh, one connector on the left side right here if you have uh, or you may have more but there should be a set of buttons over on the left side of the dash that you probably just need to unplug and so now we should be able to just pop this straight out I don't see any screws so we'll just take this guy like this and voila it is out so now we just need to unplug everything from the back side this may be a little tricky Alright, so first I'm going to go ahead and actually install the stereo receiver and the AC controls, the hazard switch, the passenger airbag light, all of those components onto the new Skosh dash kit uh, and get that all assembled. So then I can just put that off to the side and work on the wiring harness. So let me go ahead and swap everything over. It's just going to be a whole bunch of Phillips screws on the back end. So I'm going to start taking everything apart putting everything back together again. Here is the final look of the actual unit itself. There were a couple of issues while trying to install everything onto the new dash kit. Um, I had a little bit of an issue with the uh, buttons on the bottom of the AC controls sticking. So I had to file or sand down the bottom lip ever so slightly, maybe like a millimeter or so, just so that the buttons would actually work and wouldn't stick whenever I press them. So if you do run into any issues where something just doesn't feel quite so right, you can sand it down that area just slightly and it should resolve the issue. Another thing I had to figure out was how to get the AC control head off of the old dash kit. And basically there are gonna be four screws on the back side. Um, and then it's also held in by the actual control knobs. So in order to remove the AC control head, you actually have to press the middle of each of these knobs back. So that way it detaches from the control knob and then the AC control head will come off and then the control knobs, the outer portion, will come off separately from the front. But otherwise, everything looks great. So I've got everything assembled on this side. Um, I have my receiver brackets installed with the receiver. Now it's time to figure out the wiring harness and the connectors. And uh, once I have everything figured out, I'll go over everything um, as far as the wiring is concerned for this Sony unit. I did figure out all of the wiring between the Skosh car stereo pigtail harness and the Sony uh, wire harness and the Skosh car stereo harness so that you can plug in the factory antenna. So figuring it all out, you know, I have my OEM connector diagram uh, from Honda and the colors. You don't really need to concern yourselves with too much as far as the factory colors are concerned. More so you just need to know the colors for the uh, harness adapter and the Sony harness. And so the good thing is on the back side, it shows a list of all the colors for the Skosh uh, factory connector. All the colors for the Sony uh, pigtail harness are actually like 90% identical. So all the speakers are gonna be identical colors. So you match purple with purple purple with a black stripe to purple with a black stripe, all the speaker wires are gonna be exactly the same colors. So it's just matching them together. Um, there are a few wires that you need to pay attention to on 
the uh, Skosh pigtail harness side. There are a few wires that I don't need to use. Um, the brown wire, the pink wire, the uh, black and white striped wire, which I think is an amplifier ground. Um, the orange and black wire, which should be a, a dimmer or illumination ground wire that isn't really needed for this setup. On the uh, Sony pigtail harness side, um, as far as the uh, wire harness is concerned um, for the antenna, the blue wire is a power wire that we connected to the red wires on both pigtail harnesses and this just provides power for the antenna whenever the key is put into the accessory position. So that's all we needed to do was connect the red wire and blue wire with the red wire on the Skosh pigtail harness. This will allow us to use the factory antenna. Um, in addition to that, there is a ground wire on both pigtail harnesses. They're both black, uh, but you also have this light green wire, which is for your parking brake. You can go ahead and connect the black wires together with the parking brake light green wire. Um, this grounds just the parking brake circuit and allows you to use the system without actually having to tap into the parking brake switch. On the Sony side, let's see what else we got here. There was one wire based off of the factory connector schematic. I took the pink wire on the Sony pigtail harness and I connected it to the green and white striped wire on the Skosh harness. And if you look at the position, it actually, this wire is used for a vehicle speed pulse or your vehicle speed sensor. On the factory stereo system, um, you have a speed volume adjustment setting. And so this basically, the pink wire and the green and white striped wire uh, just sends a vehicle speed signal or a vehicle speed pulse signal. Um, so that way you can have a vehicle speed volume adjustment setting. Um, I believe this also needs to be uh, secured properly uh, when you're using Apple CarPlay as far as GPS or something is concerned. I have Android, so I'll be using Android Auto, but if there's a variable speed volume adjustment setting that can be set, this will send a vehicle speed sensor or vehicle speed pulse signal uh, to the Sony head unit in case it's needed. Um, this should be correct, I'll know for sure when I get it into the vehicle. Otherwise, uh, the only other wire I need to pay attention to is this reverse in wire, which is labeled on the Sony pigtail. This reverse in wire is what I'll need to connect my wire harness for the rear view camera that I'll install. That way it'll send a positive signal to the Sony head unit whenever I'm in reverse to actually show me the reverse camera display. Just one red wire will connect to this, and then one red wire uh, for the rear view camera towards the back will connect to the positive signal um, to one of my reverse lights on the back side of the vehicle. And then you'll also need, uh, in regards to the reverse camera is concerned, you'll also need to plug in uh, this wire harness that comes with the stereo receiver uh, in order to use the camera in uh, connection right here. And it's just one more connection that you need in order to get that video sent to the screen on your stereo receiver. There's also a space on the back of the stereo receiver that has a USB-C connection. So I'll install this and just place this somewhere temporary until I figure out where I want to permanently mount it. And then we also have our microphone uh, cable. That way I can answer phone calls wirelessly and uh, talk to anybody hands-free. All right, so here we are back in the car getting ready to attach all of the wiring to the vehicle. Again, these are your bottom wires for the AC control head, uh, the passenger airbag light, and the hazard switch. Um, up here, again, we have three connectors. This 17 pin connector is going to be your main stereo connector. This smaller connector right here, for me, since I have an LX, this is basically to connect the aux port down here to the factory stereo. 
we will not be using this connector so we don't have to worry about it and right here is the connector for the powered antenna for the vehicle now we have the two of the three connectors put together again this one is for my aux port which i will not be using and now it is time to start routing the trigger wire harness for the rear view camera i need to take this new trigger wire that came with the rear view camera and one side of the trigger wire i'm going to route behind the glove box and behind the dash and over onto this side and I'm gonna take this red wire right here and I'm gonna connect it to the reverse end wire for the Sony pigtail harness. And then the other side also looks pretty much identical and it also has a red wire hanging off of it. This side will go back towards the trunk area and then the red wire will connect to the positive wire that turns on the reverse lights whenever I put the car in reverse. Let me get this routed up to the stereo unit and crimp this connection to the reverse in line for this Sony pigtail harness. And then I'll start routing the, the wiring above the headliner area and back to the trunk area. So I spent the past couple hours wiring up the rear view camera, uh, routing it over on the passenger side above the headliner. I did take out both of the overhead handles. Um, they're pretty easy to remove and routed my trigger wire harness for the rear view camera all the way back to the rear trunk area, down the C pillar and underneath the deck lid to where there was a hole leading to the trunk. Then I'll show you the trunk side in just a moment. Um, but over here, I have my trigger wire right here, and then the red power trigger wire is connected to the purple and white striped wire that goes to the uh, Sony connector. Um, in addition to that, I also have my yellow RCA cable connected to this other Sony harness. Uh, so it can receive the video signal. And then I also have my USB-C cable that goes to the back of the stereo routed temporarily through here and just down here by my feet until I figure out where I'm gonna permanently mount this USB-C extension. Um, I also have my microphone set up right here and it is routed all the way down the A pillar down below the dash over here and uh, just routed around this area uh, and over to the stereo unit location. Um, so I have everything I believe routed inside the cabin of the vehicle and I can now start plugging in everything and putting the stereo unit into place. All right, I know it's a little bit of mess and I did have to use some extra wiring that changed colors uh, just to extend everything and route it how I wanted to route it. So underneath the deck lid right here, there will be a hole where you can route the trigger wire and I just zip tied it to the existing harness that's in the trunk area and routed it over here onto the driver's side. And if I pull back the covers, you can see that I've routed it all of the wiring over here and down to this location um, and that's part of the trigger wire. There's also an actual power wire harness for the rear view camera and as you can see right here this is where I put the rear view camera. I just sort of tapped into the bottom end. I'll clean it up here in just a little bit but you get the general idea of how I placed the camera just screwed it in uh, to this trim piece right here. On the back side, we have our wiring that is right here. And since the previous owner already installed a rear view camera at some point, there's already a hole behind the license plate. So all I did was use the existing hole that was already there. Uh, I'll silicone it up here in just a little bit to keep moisture out but I use the existing hole behind the license plate 
and then I routed the wiring over through here. Here you can kind of see where the wiring is right here and I just zip tied it to the existing harnesses that are already on the trunk over here if I can grab it this is where I made my connection right here and you'll see a little white wire and a little green wire sticking out um, these wires if you follow the instructions if you cut one it'll get rid of the little parking guides on the screen um, and then if you cut the other one I don't know which one's which but if you cut the other one it uh, it disables a mirrored image input into the stereo unit. Um, I'm just gonna leave these as is for right now until I figure out what's what. And then you'll have another, you know, you'll have your connection right here for the rear view camera and then you have your power wire, which I just routed. And I just followed the OEM harnesses and right here is the power wire and this is where the trigger wire meets up to the power wire that goes to the rear view camera and i have all my cords just running along the oem harnesses again on the trunk zip tying as i went along keep following the oem harness just zip tied to the oem harness and then come on over here down through the harness again and uh, I know that the wires colors are confusing. Um, I only had so much extra wire and limited colors. So the blue wire right here is supposed to be the two red wires. Um, one for the trigger harness and one for the actual power harness uh, that goes to the rear view camera. I just connected those two red wires together and then on the other end created a blue wire. So this power wire connects to my reverse light on the driver's side, right here where the connection is. And I tapped into the brown wire for power. Same goes for the white wire. I had a black wire coming down, didn't have enough. So I just added white wire to the other end of it. So this is my ground, uh, should be black wire. Uh, with maybe a thin red stripe um, but this is my ground and I just tapped into the ground wire for the reverse light connector so I know the wiring is a little bit confusing but the main thing you need to know is the positive wire for the reverse light bulb on the driver's side is brown and the black wire is ground so now that I have all of the wiring installed onto the vehicle I'm gonna go ahead and connect everything on the back end of the Sony stereo unit. And I will put my negative battery cable back onto the battery, at which point once everything is connected, I can loosely position the stereo unit with everything plugged in and see if everything works as it's supposed to. And ta-da! Just like that. Everything is plugged in on the back side. Now I can put the negative battery cable on and see if this will actually power up. It looks good so far. Moment of truth. put it in reverse the rear camera should pop on but I may need to go in settings all right rear camera works there we go That's gonna do it for this video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Don't forget to like the video if you thought it was helpful and make sure to subscribe if you wanna see future content on the 8th gen Honda Civic. I appreciate your time and I'll see you guys in the next video.
Later.